Welcome traders. This is Chris Buss with Traders Profit Compass with a mid-session update for Friday, September 18th. It is 1.26 as I'm starting the video. Okay, uh, today's another great example of don't assume anything. Don't get locked into a narrative. I had said this morning, you know, OPEX Friday, you know, be ready for a pin, whatever. That didn't happen. They started selling it right out of the gate. Another lesson there is don't put too much stock in what the pajama traders do overnight. All that really matters is what the big boys do when the regular session opens at 930. So we, you know, we had a gap up and then they faded it right away. So that's what the, that's what the big boys are doing. So here on SPY 30 minute chart, we broke that key level and now we're down testing the prior low down here at 332. By my uh, daily charts, we're trading below the 50. So that was an important key level that we were looking at. You'll have to forgive these gap levels that I have here. There was a dollar pulled out on divvies uh, today. So everything is a dollar less. So I need to go in and change those. I haven't done that yet. But look for a gap fill down here to 20, uh, 329 area. And that would be the next area of logical support. And of course, if we break that level, then it's down here into the 326s. Hard to tell how they're going to close this this afternoon. I will tell you this. On an OPEX Friday, anything can happen into the close. Uh, you know, in front of a weekend... I wouldn't be shocked if they, you know, gunned it in the last hour to park it right back up here on 332 to keep everybody guessing. But right now, everything that we had been positioning for is starting to play out. And that is more selling, losing that 50 day, and then more selling after that. Uh, it's been pretty impulsive. We just had a little hesitation here in the morning, and now they're selling it. So all systems are go for lower prices. The only thing that would um, knock me off of that, at least short term, would be recapturing this 332 level into the, you know, gunning it up, you know, up in here to the middle of the range. I would still be bearish, but obviously have to uh, respect that close. So we'll see what happens. Cues. Uh, we had talked about these bullish divergences that had formed. They have burned through those. Uh, RSI has come down into this bearish uh, regime. PPO had started making a cross and now it's rolling over. We lost the prior low. That low had been tested by my count eight times. So it took a long time to get through that level there at uh, uh, 266.40. Now that, of course, becomes major resistance level at 266.40. And, you know, they could gun it up uh, back into this area to keep us guessing over the weekend. But as it stands now, the selling is proceeding. And I have a little level of support here at 261. But longer term, if this holds, looking for the low 250s on the daily chart. I'm not going to get into that now, but that's what I'm shooting for. And that's what you should have your eye aimed on if you're a longer term swing trader on the daily time frame now that these key levels have broken that's another green light for lower prices so uh, watch watch these levels especially that 266.40 that is the 
you know, the prior low, which was tested a bunch of times in here yesterday, didn't break. Uh, they gapped it up this morning and then sold off like uh, the other ones. IWM, this, this is a nice study for you aspiring chartists out there. Uh, the other day, right up to this resistance level and was rejected. And then this morning, right up to this 155 that's been a line in the sand since forever, was rejected. And then they, you know, started selling. And if you didn't catch it here, remember what we always say, losing a support level from above is a sell. You could have gotten in right here at 153.60 and that was your short. Uh, that was an easy short because, you know, as soon as you put the trade on, it started immediately working. But just from a technical analysis standpoint, you know, recapturing a level from below is a buy. Losing a level from above is a sell. So it's not a coincidence that these failed at key levels. That, that's my point. Uh, so you should always, you know, have those levels marked, have them highlighted. And if it's something that you're interested in trading, you know, you zero in on these levels when they, you know, when they present themselves. So from here on out, uh, We've got a gap here from the other day, right at 150.50. So that would be my next level. And then if that breaks, then we're back in the 140s, uh, high 140s. So that's where that is. Um, if they were to recapture 152 on the way back up, then all those same comments apply. You know, if they were to try to gun it into the close and you're you know, an active, nimble trader, uh, that's a place where you could buy. I mean, me personally, on an OPEX Friday, you know, getting towards 3 o'clock or something like that, I'm not going to try and step in, you know, and try to get too cute on that, uh, you know, in the last hour of OPEX Friday where, you know, every bar can get wild. So you might want to temper your enthusiasm. And then, you know, if, if you see a reversal... You know, just call it a day if you got that short. You you know, you got one in the bag. Facebook, again, weak. From a charting perspective, look at where it failed. Came back up for a back test of this uh, 260 level and then failed. So your key level here is the prior low, which is... Just eyeballing it around 251. You can look on your, you know, on your five minute chart and find that exact level. But below that, the target is uh, 249, where that big gap starts. Apple. This is the one that, you know, we were in, still are in. Um, moved down below this 208 or excuse me 108 level into this gap so the target the first target from here would be to close that gap at 106 and then it's not shown on the chart but we've talked about that there isn't really much structural support below 108 so uh, what we had done on that uh, trade advisory this morning is plan for lower prices, get a position in 105 puts two weeks out, give it some time to work, hold on to the 112 puts until you see some, you know, any kind of a reversal and then you can sell out of them. That hasn't happened yet, so I've still got mine. And then by the end of the day, then close it out and take that one to the bank. 
keeping our 105 in place for the next two weeks. So that was my thinking there. No sense leaving that money on the table after the nice win. So as far as, you know, I'm concerned, I will just, you know, watch it carefully the rest of the day. You don't want to give a whole lot back, but there's no signs of that reversal yet. So why not just keep those till the close if they're not going to, you know, reverse it and, and let that trade keep working. And uh, now that we're already in the 105s, those are already positive for us. So we've got an anchored position just a little bit below. I, I think if this trade works over the next two weeks, good chance of moving down towards, you know, 100 to the mid 90s if, if this uh, mega cap tech liquidation keeps going. You know, there'll be a kickback rally and it may be pretty sharp at some point, but everything says lower at this juncture. Amazon sent out that note this morning. This was a key level, this 29.75. It has since broken. Uh, I don't have the daily chart here. I, I will cover that over the weekend, but this one is in real trouble. It never even participated in, in the bounces that the other ones participated in when they took the cues higher a couple times. This one never moved. It's been very weak. And that was your entry point right there at 29.75 this morning. And it looks like uh, 40 or $50 uh, to the good so far. Google. I've got the daily chart here, not the 30 minute, just to point out. Even though this one probably goes lower, I think it's a harder trade than the others because this one didn't advance, you know, parabolic like the other ones. We got the 200 EMA coming in, you know, just below here and uh, this key volume over price support here at 1425. That's going to, you know, those are potentially, you know, significant support levels. So not saying it doesn't go lower. If everything else is selling off, it probably will. But I think it's a harder trade. And it's one, you know, that I'm not particularly interested in. You know, if you got in up here, you got room to play with it. But, you know, I would definitely be booking some, you know, in this area as it approaches the 200. Probably going to ricochet off of there. Fang. Or, excuse me, Netflix. Another Fang name. We had identified this prior low, 465. Again. For you aspiring chartists, came up here 475 and failed. And, you know, they all did it. They did a little back check off of the, you know, gap open. And then they sold it off and now have broken below 465. As I mentioned this morning, the 200 comes in at 430. And there's... Um, a key technical level at 420. So on the daily chart, I would be looking for, you know, 430, which is, uh, you know, $35 lower from here. If everything, you know, keeps going. If I was short, I'd have my stop up here at 470, something like that. If it comes back into this range, just take it off and reload the next time if it breaks below 465. Um, you know, set your stop, respect it. If they kick it back, I think it will fail right in this 466 area and roll back over. But that's what stops are for. If you're wrong, you get a paper cut. If you're right, you win big. Uh, Tesla has been pretty much remarkable. 
uh, holding green, very resilient. No way to explain it other than, you know, nobody wants to sell it. So there it sits. It's still at this uptrend line. And uh, that's that. So, you know, anybody that had calls for today is dead. It's, it's not going to, you know, rocket up here to I saw a lot of people buying 480 and 500s, you know, yesterday. Lottery tickets, basically, for uh, today. Those didn't work out. So, anyhow, Tesla, remarkable resilience. That's all. You got to tip your hat to that. Okay, let's talk about positioning into the weekend. Let's assume that the selling continues. Bad selling doesn't end on a Friday. What I plan to do is carry a, you know, not talking about Apple and these other ones, the other trades that we have on. I'm just talking about index trades. In QQQ, what I plan to do is heading into the weekend, wherever we're at, I will roll down to at the money puts and carry a small position over the weekend and I'm not ashamed to say it hope for a gap down Sunday night for those positions uh, or position I should say singular Um, QQQ is the only one I'm going to do it with Uh, I don't see any, that's where the selling intensity has been. So, if you wait, then, and there is a gap down, then you have a much tighter window of opportunity on Monday. You know, if there's a gap down, you don't want to short into a, you know, a gap down on Monday because they might run it up and try to fill the gap. And additionally, you've lost, you know, you've lost that opportunity. But that's the weekend risk. You're you're either in it or you're not. And, you know, if you're not, you may forego that opportunity. But I think the the odds, if the selling proceeds into the close, I think the odds favor more selling on Monday than, you know, some big rally. Anything can happen. It's all about playing the odds, not going overboard, very small position, something I'm comfortable with. I'm not going to lose sleep over it over the weekend trying to hit a home run. Just just to know or just to have enough to be in it. That's all. That's all I'm talking about. And that's what I would suggest for you if you want to do that. Do something you're comfortable with. Don't do anything that's going to cause you to bite your fingernails, you know, all over the weekend. It's not worth it. Um, And if you have, you know, a small account size where that's a meaningful amount of money, even a small position, don't do it. There'll be plenty of opportunities next week uh, to participate in whatever may happen. It's... uh, it's not worth it if if you're in that uh, scenario or you're not comfortable with it. So that's what I see right now. Um, the downside is starting to play out. Uh, you're never really out of the woods, you know, on your thinking or your positioning. But below all the 50 EMAs, selling on a Friday, the odds favor lower. Uh and whatever they do in the close for OPEX is what they do. But that's my feeling right now. So if you like the content and you're new to the channel, please hit the thumbs up and subscribe. I'd really appreciate that. Jump over to the show notes and you can find places to links to register for my content to get this stuff uh, directly in your mailbox uh, each and every day. So I hope you're doing well. I hope you're killing it. The pre-market prep is everything, knowing the levels, keying off those levels, and then having a game plan to execute 
uh, throughout the day makes all the difference in the world. Uh, and, I, and I think we were very well prepared as far as levels and thinking heading into the day with no preconceived notions, no ego, none of that stuff to get in the way of simply doing our best to execute the trades. So I hope you're killing it. I will try to get uh, a recap at the end of the day, how we close, but definitely over the weekend, look forward to hearing from me on thoughts heading into next week. So this has been Chris Buss with Traders Profit Compass. Talk to you next time.